because of our whole making real before most of our honors still talk to each other. Um, so I hope this will be really helpful. Um, we have two amazing people who come here. So uh, Lenny is the talent coach at CNN. And before that, he was a senior producer at ABC um, for more than 20 years. He used to teach the Night and News class here, also teaches video one and on our skills. And um, he really talked to us about the career fair and what we need to have ready for that. And then we have Ray Vietta over here, who is an on-air reporter for WNBC. And uh, before that, he was at Syracuse and Hartford and then at NBC Universal in Texas. Yes. Yeah. And so um, he has a lot of great experience. He also has his reel that he'll show us. Um, and so he can talk about the feedback he's gotten and show the reel that got him his job. And um, so they're going to talk about that. And then we'll have time for everyone to ask questions as well. Hi there. Wow, this is cool. Okay, hi there. Um, we're gonna start off just a little bit with uh, the career fair, which you're all sort of facing, and some of you know what to do and some of you don't. So having been to a number of them over the last few years, and you should all thank Julie Hartenstein, a uh, great big thanks for uh, what, has be what, ha what that fair has become. Because five years ago, 10 years ago, and before she took that job, there was nothing. I've been teaching here for 20 years. But that is, that's even getting harder and harder because our business, as you know, has been disrupted to some degree. And uh, platforms are sort of splintering and going this way and that way and uh, nobody knows what. But I will tell you one thing that I think you need to remember. I want to, first of all, disabuse you from the notion that there is a division between television and digital. Yes, there are some things that are purely television, although not many anymore, and there are some things that are purely digital uh, and online. But if you're working as a reporter at a TV station where you'll get paid better and not be working in a sweatshop atmosphere more often than not, you will be doing digital stories, you'll be doing videos for the website. Um, you'll be tweeting, Facebooking, <laughs> taking video, taking pictures, putting that online, putting that on Twitter, putting that on Facebook while you're writing, while you're still interviewing. You're sending that back to the station. It's constant. It's, you're never really just sitting there to write a story. You're constantly sending all that stuff in. To the point where one of, one of my best students last year, who was both in my Video One class and in Nightly News, um, Lydia, who is working down in Birmingham, and we had a conversation last week, and she was telling me about her schedule. She comes in, she pitches a story, she goes out and shoots it, because she's an MMJ. She comes back with that material, writes it, edits it, does a live hit on the five o'clock show, then repackages it for the 10 or 11, I forget what it is, and then somewhere in between and, and or afterwards, she has to write four digital versions of the story which is essentially in print format. You can't, in the, old, in the old days, five years ago or so, when we did a story for, and I worked for World News Tonight at, at ABC News for 20 years. Uh, well, most of the 20 years, I did other things too. Um, if we were to put a story online and then write a script to go with it, we essentially took the TV script and added a couple of sound bites in the form of quotes, added a couple of sentences, maybe something that didn't get in because we didn't have time for it, and you were done. Now they want a full story. And I think Ray can talk more about that because you probably do more of that. But at any rate, what I wanted to do at first is to give you an idea of what you need for the career fair. How many of you are interested primarily in television jobs? Okay, that's a lot of you. How many of you are interested mostly in digital? Okay, like I said, I think you're mostly gonna be doing both. And there are some differences, but there aren't that many differences. If you do stories for World News Tonight today, this, or for, even for local news, you're rarely gonna get a story that's more than a minute 15 or a minute 30. A minute 30 for local news. World News Tonight now. It's like one, one minute. One minute, <laughs> one ten. I, did, you know, I do stories for them periodically with, I work with a guy named John Donvan, who's one of the great writers of our business. And I'll do some, close, some enders with him, show closers. And um, 
you know, if it, I have to argue to get to 115. It's a struggle every time. Um, and, I'm, and the woman who runs the show used to be a student of mine here at Columbia. So she treats me pretty well, but she won't give me the time or time of day. But that's another story. Anyway, for the career fair, you don't need a whole lot. Your reel primarily, as Ray can tell you, is about letting news directors or other managers who make decisions, and sometimes it's assistant news directors, sometimes it's general managers, sometimes it's anchors that weigh in. They want to see you. They want to hear you. They want to know that you are credible on TV. It's not about being the most beautiful, being the sexiest, being the tallest, being the fairest. It's about looking and sounding like a reporter. Yes, it's important that you look your best, that your hair is cut properly, that you dress well. Do not go do stand-ups for your reel in a torn T-shirt. And trust me, that happens. I had somebody do that 10 years ago. I was a little upset. So The only time that's okay is if you're like in a war zone. Even in a war even zone. <laughs> Unless you're the one who got hit. Oh, you go. <laughs> I mean, you can certainly dress down in a war zone. And we're past the days where years and years ago, and one of the jobs that Justine didn't mention was I was a, a news cameraman for NBC News when I was very young. And I worked with a guy named Frank Burkholzer, who was one of the legends in our business. And uh, we were in New Mexico, New Mexico or something? Yeah. And we climbed a mountain to find mountain sheep. We were doing a story on mountain sheep. And we went, I mean, I fell on cactus. They had to take me to the hospital eventually. But anyway, we climbed up this mountain. And there's Burkholzer, 65 years old, walking, climbing up this mountain like it's a walk in the park. And I'm huffing and puffing. And we get there. And he's getting ready to do his stand-up. Puts on his jacket, puts on his tie, cinches it up like this, and we do the stand-up. And you don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> if you're on a mountain, if you're in a tornado, you, can, you, you, know, you don't have to be that dressed up. But you have to look like you belong. You have to have a jacket. If you're in a tornado, you got to wear something that's waterproof. Anyway, so when you go out and do your stand-ups, and you're doing Hopefully some of, you are, some of them are doing them, some of you are doing them for your classes. I saw Anya yesterday, and it looked pretty good. Better than in video one. <laughs> yeah, much better. So a lot of you are working on these things now. How many of you are doing stand-ups in your classes at all? No, it's quite a few. All right, so you have some to work with. Primarily, and I don't know if anybody's told you this, if, you have, if they have, I apologize, you want three stand-ups that are about 15 seconds long. They can be a little shorter. I wouldn't make them much longer. And again, if you can do a stand-up that has movement in it. That's huge. Everyone is going to tell you that over and over and over and over again. So know how to move in front of the camera. Yeah, I mean, one of the great ones in New York City is walking up the steps of the subway. That's always good. You can do a stand-up about slashers on the subway, walk up the steps. Walk along the platform, all right? If you're doing a mural, Daniel, if you're doing a story about a mural, walk in front of it. Show it to people. Have the camera pan up, which is not always easy to do if you're a one-man band, but do the best you can or get a partner to help you. Um, pointed things but don't overdo it, okay? Pointing is like this, not like this, unless you're Jim Dolan. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he can do anything well, he wants. Jim Dolan is. Yeah, he's, he's a he's character. Been doing it since I was a kid. Show your personality. Be it's confident. Important. Be, Be confident. confident in front of that camera. Sell it, because that's really what you're doing, is you're selling this story. Right. So you want people who are watching you to believe that you know exactly what you're talking about, even if you don't. It's really, <laughs> yeah. it's really a game of confidence. That's a very important point. And the thing, people always ask me, well, why do I need to do a stand-up? A lot of people don't do stand-ups. And a lot of people here don't teach stand-ups, particularly in video one. The reason that you do stand-ups are many, but the most important reason is the people who are watching want to know who's talking to them. They so make connect. sure you see both your eyes so that people can trust you. This is the woman I was talking about 
who is responsible for the career fair and who's made a huge difference in his school. I'm trying to embarrass her because we're old friends, but she has done a marvelous, marvelous job over the last years. And yeah, they do. And they just want to know that you are the, person, the kind of person they can put on the air. So three stand-ups. And, and try to change those stand-ups up. Don't do the same thing in every stand-up because they want to see you in different atmospheres to get a sense that you're versatile, that you can do different stories, and that you can do them well and not be a one-trick pony. So try to make them as different as possible and make them memorable. Because if you do a stand-up that they're like, wow, that was really great, that they're going to like if you were showing some monkey or something, they're going to be like, oh, that's the guy who did the stand-up with the monkey. Just, yeah. a, just an yeah. example, but you want to be memorable. Be careful, the monkeys can get a little that. wild. But, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but it's, it, it's like that. I mean, years ago when I was working for ABC News and I was, there, I was a producer for talent development, and I went to one of the, um, there are all these, um, like an ABJ and an AHJ, and con do the, all, all these conventions. <laughs> and there, I went to, this was a unity convention. And a young woman walked up thinking I was from the Raleigh affiliate for ABC, didn't realize it was the network booth, and she showed me her tape, because it was tape in those days. And I looked at the first shot, and then she did a stand-up walking across the street in the rain. You know, and it was just like, wow. And we hired her three weeks later. Wow. So you gotta get something that's memorable, okay? If you can. Again, movement is key. Most of the time these days, stand-ups are bridges. They're in the middle of the piece. Usually when you're gonna do a stand-up in the middle of the piece, there's a transition involved. And sometimes you don't have the video for that element, and that's why you're doing a stand-up to show something that your photographer or you don't have the video to show. Yeah, and the most common one of those is dealing with New York City. If you're dealing with the Department of Education, the Police Department, the Department of Transport, and a myriad of other agencies, usually they won't talk to you. They'll just give you a statement. Statements. Yeah, and so those make very good stand-ups. Another really important stand-up is making a transition, either from a, the, the close focus to the wider focus, doing a story about a kid who has an orphan disease, and you, sh you sh tell us about the kid and the parents and what they're doing, and then you want to go out to how many of these drugs are made and how much they cost, and what people are doing about it. That's a good stand-up. If you're gonna change times, time to like today's city council meeting, or you're gonna focus on somebody who's affected by today's city council meeting, you do the, story, you do the, the characters first, and then you do a stand-up that takes you to the city council meeting, depending on where you are. If you're at the meeting, you can do it there or outside. If you're at the parents' place or the, where, the building or whatever, you can do it there and then go to the city council meeting. Transitions work really well, okay? And if you can transition from one thing to another by doing a walk, that works well too. I mean, do you have any other? Yeah, for example, yesterday I did a story at LaGuardia Airport. There was a runway that was shut down because there was a pothole. So a lot of our interviews were obviously inside the terminal, a lot of passengers that are complaining about being delayed. So as soon as we pulled into the airport, I noticed there was a long line of airplanes. So it was like perfect, perfect stand-up. So what I did was I got in front of the truck and the photographer shot me and I said, the first thing you see when you pull into LaGuardia is a line of airplanes. And then he panned off of me to show the airplanes. And I said, and those are the folks that we've heard from on Twitter complaining about being in that line for hours, cut to either a passenger, tweets that we got, or I ended up using just another soundbite right. to talk about those delays. So do your stand-ups that way, if you can. And again, it's about looking good, sounding good, showing that you're a dynamic person, that you're credible, that I can see both your eyes. Let me repeat that, because it's really important. That goes for your interviews, too. I don't want, if, I'm, if you're in my class, I don't want to see an interview shot from over here, or a stand-up, definitely or from down here, because then I'm looking up your nostrils, not so, not so. It's attractive. never, ever appealing to anyone. <laughs> it's never, ever no, pleasing. No matter how good looking you are, not really that appealing. Um, so take some care with that. The other thing that um, they're gonna want on this sort of mini reel that you're gonna do, I'm sorry, you should hold this here. 
on this sort of mini reel that you're doing for the career fair is a short piece. And it should be the kind of piece you're going to see in local news. Because most of the people are there for local news. It's rare that you're going to go up to a network recruiter and get an on-air job. Although these days, I mean, Jesus, <laughs> the people I've seen making that transition from here yeah. to like Al Jazeera or something, not that that exists well, anymore. That but <laughs> it does exist for another month. For another month. But yeah. I'm just saying nowadays, you guys have that luxury where you make those jumps a lot quicker than That's true. some of us who've done the true and tried, started yeah. small and worked Well, there is up. no true and tried anymore. <laughs> That's the, the bottom line. Exactly. One of the people that I've been training at, at CNN is Sarah Ganim. And Sarah was the young reporter at the um, Harrisburg, was it, Patriot Ledger, who broke the Sandusky story, the big scandal at Penn State University. And um, she won the Pulitzer Prize here in this very room, I believe, at 25 years old. Maybe they have a bigger reception for that. I don't remember. Anyway, she, I'm sorry. Oh, Law Library. Okay. It's a nice, nice place for a party. You know, anyway, she won the Pulitzer Prize at 25 years old. Not that I'm not jealous, but at any rate, and CNN hired her, and we had to make her into a TV reporter, which is the opposite of what you would normally do. And it was difficult at times. We worked very, we worked very hard at it, learning how to write for television, learning how to uh, dress, how to do her hair, how to, you know, how to talk, how to read a teleprompter, all those things. You don't have to be able to sell yourself as being able to do all those things. At this point, the career fair you have to convince these people that you belong on television and that you have potential. That's the name of the game. That you are a person that it's worth their while and their resources to invest in you. I don't think there's anything that gets overdone. I think it's just the way that you tell it. If you're gonna tell a crime story, I mean, it's gonna sound cliche, but get the victim if you can. I mean, those are the stories that are gonna be memorable, are the ones that stand out to people. If you do a subway story and you just get random man on the street, MOS, it's just like, okay, whatever. No one's gonna remember that. Yeah. If you get a crying person who's like, I was stabbed six years ago and now I'm representing this group who is gonna stop all these crimes from happening, and he's crying. I mean, you need something that's memorable like that. You need a character. So it really doesn't matter what the story is as long as you tell it through the eyes of a character that's going to stand out. And would you recommend doing, like, one crime story, one kind of human interest, animal story? I don't know. Like, I think it's a variety. It really matters a lot of the diversity of that story. Okay. I think so. What do you... Yeah, no, go ahead. I, think I would say... So, yeah. for example, the resume tape, I'm going to show, had three different stories. And one of them off the top was a weather story. And then I did, uh, do you remember the Oklahoma University racist chant? I did that, I went up to Oklahoma University for that. And then there was, I can't even remember the third one, I've seen it so many times. It's gonna but, be on the reel? Yeah, it's gonna be on okay. the reel. But I mean, I did a variety, you know, it's completely different stories in different areas just to show people. Oh, at border, I went to the border. Keep in mind, I was in Dallas, so it was, we covered that area. The full thing, so the story is the full thing from start to end. talking about now let's distinguish between what you're preparing for the career fair and for your reel that's going to be then the follow-up to the people you've been at met at the I'm sorry to the people you've met at the career fair okay now we're talking about the longer reel well, no, I'm just talking about a story that you would show at the expo that then you would also have on your college reel uh, between a, between a minute 15 and a minute 30 Four I'm sorry say again Julie I, I'm, the stories you're doing in your classes are probably longer, much longer than that, right? No? Who's making you do a minute and a half story? Yeah, she is. She is. She's tall, too. Yeah. Yeah.
you would need a variety of stand-ups, and usually short, quick, I got the point, here you are in this, next, here you are in this, here you are doing this, here you are doing this. Then three different packages usually ranging between 115 to 130. If you've done an in and an out, or a, make sure you've done a stand-up at least so they can see you fronting this story, they can see you being a part of this story. So if you do an in and an out, you don't need to do a stand-up. If you do a stand-up, you don't need to do an in and out. Or you could do all three, depending on how much you invested in the story and how visual it is or not visual. Tell them what you mean by an in and out. An in and out is you introduce the story on camera, and then an out is you tag out of the story, like you bring the story to an end on camera and sign out saying your name. That's sometimes known in the network world, at least as a look live open and look live close. But every station I've been at calls it a completely different thing. Absolutely. <laughs> as live, look live, intro, outro. And the same thing is true of your lower thirds, your fonts, your chirons, your CGs, Supers. and my favorite at Fox 5 here in New York, they call them baseballs because the first instance of them that ever occurred were when Rune Arledge put them at, on, over baseball players to tell people who they were way back when. I wasn't around. I was going to say. So the writing of a stand-up is, first off, you want to captivate people to follow into the story, so you need to make it interesting. So. For example, yesterday I said hours of backups in the sky, in the terminal, and on the runway. Just the threes, always rule of threes, by the way, is something I learned, and it's just stuck with me because we think in threes, so usually when you say stuff in threes, people remember it. It's like kind of alliteration, but not really. So it's usually something catchy like, okay, 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 and then I said, and while the pothole has been fixed, the travel woes, they still linger then you take to the package, which is basically about all these people complaining. So you're already thinking, oh, what are the travel woes that are still lingering? Toss the package. Um, you're and talking then, about an opening to yeah, a piece. Yeah, an open, an open to the piece. Remember the opening to a piece, if you're gonna do a stand-up, the opening to a piece is kind of what the lead-in is that the anchor might use, which is a promise to the viewer about what they're gonna find out. You're setting it up so that they people kind of expect what's coming, but you're gonna make it compelling so that they want to stick around and, l and learn what it is you're going to tell them. You don't do that, people are going to get mad. If you, don't, if you, if you make a promise and don't keep it, or if you don't make it compelling, and they, then eh, I won't care. Next, click, next and then station. The, and then the tag, the end, the end sentence or the end, the way you bring it to a close is bring that story to an end so that people aren't left asking questions. So for example, yesterday I said, what caused that pothole? It's still unclear if it's weather or if it was a plane that landed too hard, too, that landed, that touched down, that had a hard landing. <laughs> Words. That had a hard landing, they're still investigating. And while the pothole has been fixed, you're gonna wanna check with your airline because there are still some lingering delays on LaGuardia. So it kind of brings it to that, an end. That's called informing the consumer. Yeah. Uh, And that first, hand impre that first impression is everything. So go there looking like the person you want to be on television so that they remember that because sometimes they will just make that decision off that first meeting. If you're that memorable to them, they could say, hey, we'll just teach them everything well, and give them all that I, I think that's an excellent point, which is dress up. <laughs> look, you know, look like you belong on the air. Professionally. When, professionally, right. No, no swimsuits. <laughs> yeah, okay. No,
No, no, minute 15 is for the one story, the full story. So it's about two minutes total. Look, I mean, if you want to do documentary work, then you need some documentary stuff. The other thing is don't get discouraged because all this stuff is incredibly subjective. One news director can say, wow, and the next one can say, eh, you know, and it has nothing to do with whether you're capable or attractive or the right person or not. All it takes is one person, one person to like you. For example, here in New York, uh, one of the stations, I applied at one of the stations I really wanted to work at. 15, I sent my reel to her and 15 minutes later, no joke, she emailed me back and said, thanks, I watched it, I'm going to have to pass. And I'm still in New York, <laughs> and yeah. I'm at the flagship WNBC at 30 Rock. So it worked out for the best still, but I, and that was here in New York. So, and I've had that happen to me numerous times. I emailed once a news director out in Sacramento, and he told me I wasn't ready. Fast forward a few years later, and he called me from Philadelphia being interested. So, I mean, it's so subjective. I have had a bunch of rejections, but all it took was one person in one city, and then fast forward. Can you talk about some of the biggest mistakes in the theater? You really said that too. But what are the biggest things where it's just it's something that we might have to do that's really Hmm. Well, I mean, the first thing is not dressing appropriately. That's number one. Also, don't no. come across as wanting to be on TV. Because I have to tell you, I see, I mean, some people are like, I just want to be an anchor. Don't even, just don't. Because that never goes over well. No, at it least doesn't. from what I've. They want to know you want to be a reporter. They want to know that you want to go out there and dig and hunt and get that story. That's the person they're looking for because they have a ton of people who are Miss X universes who think they can be the next anchor. They don't want to hear that. That's like one mistake, like, oh, I want to be an anchor. Yeah, everyone wants to be an anchor. <laughs> That's not going to get you the job. And the other thing I think is, listen, one of the things that's always underrated is writing. Yes. Writing for, for, and writing for television or, or video. Writing, what I call writing for the ear and the eye. And um, that involves you, the words you use. And uh, those of you who took video one with me can, or the people who are here, can tell you how much I emphasize that. Oh, you'll see it when we, uh, for those of you in the uh, on-air class that I teach or the- Two suspects are in oh, custody, believed to be connected to, I real. did not, that, I don't know why that <laughs> happened. <laughs> Continue. Anyway, I was just, just, I think you need to, when you talk to these people, tell them, as, as Ray talked about, how much you care about reporting, how much you care about writing, how much you care about your craft, how much you care about making good pictures. Um, the mistake you can make is just concentrating on one thing, because these days, everybody wants to hire people who know how to do a, a, a number of things. And even if you get to a station where you're not uh, shooting your own video or editing your own video, which you do at a lot of places, uh, the fact that you can do it and know how it works makes you better at your job and will help you do better pieces and, and, and get ahead faster. Ray, why don't we look at your, okay. this is a reel for. So, I'm mean, gonna use some caveats. Some ca <laughs> so first off, this is a reel after, I've been doing this since 2007, so keep in mind, it's not, you're not expected to seem this comfortable if you think I look that comfortable there. But, so this is like eight years later, or God, it's nine years later, after I graduated college that this reel has come about. But in all of it, what you should take away is there are different stories, different elements, where I'm in different elements to show this person, hey, this isn't just a one-trick pony who can just do hard news. Here he is, like, doing weather. Here he is. I, I think there's one where I'm even in Spanish talking, because I'm bilingual, so.
There are several offices and agencies that work hand in hand. Their objective is clear to secure our nation's border. An EF1 tornado ripped through this neighborhood, directly hitting a school. But the folks I spoke with, they say the tornado may have ripped their homes, but they're just glad it spared their lives. This is a telltale sign of a path taken by illegal migrants to get into the U.S. You could tell because it's worn down. Another telltale sign right here a child's jacket left behind. We're right by the 35 service road and you can see it is open. It was a much different story just hours ago when the water was so high at points it was past my waist. The local chapter learned that racist chant from the national organization. Now both the organization and this campus are taking steps to make sure they're more inclusive. To break down how many people were working on board last night's up. flight, there were two pilots in the cockpit there were three medical crew members working right here at the center of the plane. And right here in the back of the plane, in an isolation unit, was Nina Pham. Tonight we know Amber Vincent is here in an isolation unit at Emory University Hospital. For the first time in days, her family is releasing a statement. This right here was just blown down like it was a leaf. And it's pretty much like that if you look around this whole area. Buenas noches, Norma, desde Atlanta. Es aquí que sabemos que Amber Vinson está en condición estable. Eso nos dice un amigo de la familia. Es aquí que ella llegó ayer. Here's what's happening. When folks go to the gas pump, a lot of times they'll leave their purse or wallet unattended in the center console or even in the passenger seat. That's when a suspect vehicle pulls up. One of the suspects jumps out, crouches down, takes the purse, and then takes off. And aside from that tip that police got, so any other reason why they would link you to this? So this right here, you know, I talked about moments. They're looking for moments. And the reason we included this was because this was a moment where I'm inside a jail talking to this guy who's being accused of, ser of being a serial rapist in the city of Dallas. And so here I, you know, I'm confronting him. And basically, it, it was just a moment where it was just like, here I am, a local news reporter, just sitting down with someone they believe is a rapist having a conversation with him, and it was just to show a different facet than the usual, like, here I am walking and talking, here I am showing and telling. So this was what this was. And so for those people watching, you are innocent. I'm you have totally no connection to those rapes. No connection, I'm totally innocent. The Black Friday shopping weekend is coming to a close after scenes just like this one. And while there were many of them, overall, the numbers were down for the official start to the holiday shopping season. Okay, so that was the montage. And so as you can see, it was different, and then that was, just to show some anchoring that I've done some anchoring. But if you notice, it, it makes up live shots, which we do a lot in local news all the time. And it was stand-ups inside the story and then tags in some of those cases. This was much longer than what you're going to need, <laughs> clearly. It, usually it's what, like two, three minutes for a news director maybe? At well, no, not two, three, like a minute. You're talking about for the career for local, fair? For the career fair, it's yeah. probably a minute. But when you get to your real, your actual reel that you're gonna take with you once you leave here or, or and show to other people, it should be probably about six or seven minutes in that neighborhood. Your opening montage should be a minute to a minute and a half tops. Um, and then you need three stories maybe, maybe two, depending. I'd say three. Yeah, three is good, but listen, you're better off, at least from my experience, having two really good stories than trying to j jam a third one in there that's not as good. And if you can show one that's more hard news uh, and one that's more feature-ish, you know, something that's a little bit more personality-driven or character-driven. And let me underline what Ray said before. No story is good without really good characters. You want to put your best stuff right off the top. Mm -hmm. the pr and what I was going to say, too, was what he said about your eyes and seeing your eyes. If you notice, the first few of them were static, and it was just to show, like, yeah. hey, this is the guy you want to hire. This is how he sounds. This is him on the scene of a story. So that's what you're selling. So I have to make, I mean, you, I can't say that enough. And also, don't wear anything that's too distracting. Someone once told me about ties, for example, for guys. You never want to be so distracting that you take away from people's eyes, because that's what people are going to connect to, is your eyes. When you're talking, when you're showing, when you're telling, it's all about here. So if you're wearing, like, crazy patterns, yeah. Big no. earrings. Yeah, big earrings yeah. are just taking away from what people... Jewel, a lot of jewelry. It's just distracting. Especially if it makes noise and hitting your microphone. Which is another story. Should I keep... So I'm going to show you just an example of some of a, of a story. The first story off the tape. And you let me know why you think it should have been there. Or why I put it there. 
The cleanup is underway right now, Deanna. The National Weather Service says an EF1 tornado ripped through this neighborhood directly hitting a school. But the folks I spoke with, they say the tornado may have ripped their homes, but they're just glad it spared their lives. With the bright blue Oklahoma sky above, the damage, the reality for the Chavez family sinks in. Their belongings ripped from their home and tossed out. The roof is gone, but they're alive after hiding right here. I was just praying. I was praying to the Lord and saying, please help us. Clutching on to his wife and their four puppies, they held on for dear life. Like five seconds, everything was gone. His wife sitting outside among the wreckage today still can't believe it. Words can't explain it. So things happen for a reason, but I'm just happy that we're still here. Streets away, most of the homes have their roofs, but not the Von Ettens. That's gone, but their faith isn't, and the heart of this family is very much still in this home. My husband, he was holding the door closed, like really tight, and he was just praying out loud. Like, so that's, I mean, that's all you can do. They, like the Chavez family, hid in a closet. It's the only part of the house still covered by a piece of roof. I was just holding them, you know, we were all just squeezed into the tiny little closet. We just, we were just praying. <laughs> Within that community, an elementary school, Southgate, took a direct hit. The governor toured it this morning. It's an eerie reminder of what took place in this city just two years ago. In 2013, Plaza Towers Elementary was hit and children were injured. It's hard to believe that two years later we're back at a more public school surveying damage. I am very thankful that the school did not receive this damage during school hours. Damage, debris, and determination fill the streets of Moore. Like in 2013, the spirit of the folks here is unshaken. We just keep telling them everything's going to be okay. <laughs> so, just everything's going to be okay. Like God protected us, it's the most important thing. You know, we're alive, so that's just the most important thing. So many folks feel that it is truly the most important thing. You know what? We have spoken to officials. They tell us that tonight there are no reports of major injuries or fatalities here in Moore, Oklahoma. And for that, the folks here are grateful. We're live in Moore, Oklahoma tonight. I'm Ray Vieta, NBC5. So characters right off the top and the officials were buried because no one really cares what the governor has to say, really. I mean, it was just a quick like, hey, here she was, here she said something, here's what she said about it. But if you notice right off the top, it's just people, 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 because that's what us as viewers connect to is other folks and what they're going through. Absolutely. I want you to notice a couple other things. A small thing, he's pointing at people, but he's never pointing at the audience. When he, when he points, he goes like this, so there's never this. Okay. I didn't think about that. What? I never even thought about that. Yeah, because it's really rude and, and viewers hate it. Um, and we, even when he <coughs> wanted to reference stuff behind him, he made a motion, but it wasn't a huge motion. Okay, but more important, and this is something that you should always remember when you're writing for television, present tense whenever possible. Active. The streets fill, not the streets are being filled, or the streets have been filled, if you can't do it at all. Present tense, active voice, one thought for one sentence. Try to stay away from a lot of ands, or, ors, or buts in the middle of your sentences. If you look at the way you write, and there's a connective word, a conjunction in the middle of it, say, can I make that into two sentences? Will it be more powerful? Will it be stronger and easier, for you to say. And, and easier for you to say? These are really important things. Yeah. So a lot of times, a lot of times it's just when you did. Oh. So a lot of times I don't, sometimes I don't even really write it, like if I'm just there, it's, it's just like that tag, for example, I had written something else completely different, but I just went off of the story because I just felt like these people were so emotional. So I just went off of that and was like, oh yeah, no one died. Like that. So I mean, a lot of times just what the feel you get from the story will kind of help dictate what you say, what you, but yes, you can write it out, for example, once, but I feel that when you're doing the story, it's best to just like if you see something, for example, that stands out to you, like yesterday I got to LaGuardia, the first thing I saw was that row of planes and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna shoot something here. I'm gonna use it or not use it, I'll have it at least. So while you're in it, while you're actually doing the story, 
if something stands out to you, chances are it's gonna stand out to other people. So just shoot it there anyway. Even if you don't end up using the stand-up, even if you can't find a way to include it in your story, at least you've done it and you have it to use perhaps on a reel, so. I mean, there, I at least teach uh, three ways to end a piece, uh, whether you're gonna do it on camera or not, uh, and you might have additional ways, but number one, looking ahead to what's happening next in, in the story, whether it's a hearing or, you know, the weather tomorrow or whatever it might be. Two, summing up what the story's about, and that's what, what Ray was doing there. He was talking about the people and what their feelings are. And he also added the third thing in there, which is sometimes you've, you don't have room for every great thought that, that people give you. And if you can think of something that somebody said to you that really that moved you. a lot, a yeah. lot, I do yeah. that a lot. Something that moves you that you want to include. It makes for a really poignant and interesting stand-up close or just a close with pictures of that person that you're talking about if you're gonna do a bridge in the middle of the piece. Okay, so those are things that go into it. And trust me, at this point in your career, news directors are gonna be more impressed by the content of your stand-up than they are, than you, that, that you, you know, look perfect. Correct. Because they want people who have texture, who have depth, and who can bring them something special. Because that's what the audience wants to see. Trust me, I've worked in this business a long time. I saw, what the, the I forget his name, there's a guy in Florida, 350 pounds. <laughs> and I saw him the first time, and he's like five foot one, and as wide as he is tall. And he was one of the most popular people in South Florida. Everybody loved him. Al Roker, for those of you who know, who's now skinny like that, <laughs> but for years, he, he was, was huge. He was huge. Um, there are people who are tall, there are people who are thin. It's really about personality and credibility and you know, just com being compelling. So that's the most important thing. Yeah. Oh, wait, what kind of accent do you have? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. You know, honestly, it just depends where you are and who you're talking about. If you're gonna go to work for CNN International, not a problem. Uh, for some outlets, NBC News particularly has used people who have British accents and sometimes Australian. Um, local news tends not to, just because Americans can be very, you know, very short, short-sighted, <laughs> stupid about these things. Um, so I mean, you tell me. You're, I mean, I've always, luckily, had. Accent, so I yeah. haven't run into that as much. But I, I in mean, the South, in Texas, they love they yeah. love y'all. They love yeah. the draw. Like they they were totally into that. And if you're in Miami and you have a little bit of a Spanish accent, not a problem. If you're in Brownsville, Texas, where you're near the border, <laughs> not a problem. Not a problem. You know, so people talk differently in Southern California than they do in New York. If you're in Boston, like my wife, and she said ma, you know, nobody cares. You know, so there's, there's some relativity to it. But by and large, if you have a fairly thick accent, it's very difficult, so. So do you always know what your story is going in? So like, of course, they assign you the story, but do you know like, what, how, what you want your story to be? Or do you figure that out quickly after you just like, you know, Well, first off, local news directors are gonna want you to walk in with three story ideas every day. So usually, yes. In the case of that story, it was just, hey, a tornado hit, a tornado hit, just go out there. Yeah. So that one was just the stories. We just found the stories when we started talking to people and then it kind of came together that way. So that I didn't know what to expect, just that houses had been torn apart and we were just gonna find in talking to people their story and put it together that way. And he found the characters and that again, that's the most important thing to underline. Um, I just wanna underline what he said about having three story ideas when you come in every day. Um, Anybody can learn to talk. Anybody can learn to write to some degree. But ideas will make you a star. Correct. If you have ideas and you can 
come up with ideas and execute them. Obviously, you need to do that too. But there are people making a living just by having ideas who never leave the newsroom. And they do really well in the long run too. As you know, they become news directors you know, and general managers. So ideas are really important. And you get ideas by reading, by thinking, by, making by talking to people, by making connections. Making connections with people. So I will say that, for example, when I would pitch a story, like uh, in Dallas, I did a lot, a lot of local crime um, because there was not a lot of crime in Dallas. So anything that happened there was a big story. But I would have the idea like, oh, there have been six break-ins in this one neighborhood. So right off the bat, I knew, okay, I have to go find a victim first off. So it's going to be that victim story and then maybe some neighbor sound bites. So I had an idea of what it's probably going to look like. So in that sense, yes, I did know what I was, what my goal was and what the story would probably look look like after it was all said and done. But stuff like that where it's just happening there just comes together there. So. There are some other people who had questions. Okay, over there. I think it never hurts yeah. to be involved with your interview subjects and talking to them at all because it shows people like, hey, here I am with them to getting their story. It used to be that, that uh, we would teach filming interviews in a very sort of uh, traditional way where you basically see the interviewee and then you see the interviewer maybe in a wide shot and then you do a reverse and all that kind of stuff. Nowadays, I mean, shot. It's, <laughs> it's all shot, shot with two shots and one of the reasons you can do that is because of systems like um, Premiere Pro and, and Avid and, and uh, Edius, I, I'm sorry? Edius. Yeah, all these, all these what we call nonlinear editing systems allow you to use different transitions between interviews and sound bites where in the old days, which wasn't that long ago, uh, when we were shooting either with film or with tape and you were re literally splicing film together or making electronic edits on videotape, you couldn't do that. So you have to shoot them a certain way in order to be able to edit them together. These days, most reporters want to be in the shot for the whole interview. And it's a little complicated to shoot them properly. But um, what good camera people do is they wind up moving around depending yes. on what, what's going on. Um, but it, that, that takes some skill. And if you're an MMJ and you're by yourself, that's really hard. So uh, it's hard to interact with people unless you set the camera on a tripod, kind of figure out where it's going to be, and then you know get in the shot. But I don't think these news directors are going to expect you to have that type of production quality yeah. I, at yeah. all. No. So I don't think. I, I don't think you should worry about have. that, frankly. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes, because it was, I was going for English news. I wasn't going for a Spanish language station. It was just to say, we basically tailor made it to WNBC because I wanted to be, I was already at the NBC owned and operated station in Dallas. I just wanted to move up within the company. And it was a big selling point to say, hey, this guy can go to those big stories and do them in English and Spanish and you don't have anyone who does that. So the reason I did that was to say like, hey, look, I was covering mm -hmm. Ebola in English and here I am covering Ebola in Spanish. So. I mean, it was you, just you know there's a huge Spanish-speaking population in this city, in New York. So it was just throwing it there. But it was to basically say, I can do it, but it's not my main, my main draw. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God, it's huge. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. huge. It's, it's, yeah. I think you need a driver's license. Period. I still Period. have my Texas license. Yeah. So <laughs> it doesn't. I, you know, in this country, it doesn't really matter where the state is. I mean, you have a certain amount of time to get a new one, but from where? Yeah. Well, no, Minnesota is the exception, I think. <laughs> it's just too cold. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I had my Connecticut license in Texas for yeah. Yeah. too long. But, yeah. All right. Back there, and then Larissa. Okay. It's tough because you have to lock the camera down. 
So it usually, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, um, it's a few steps, or it's walking up a couple of steps, or you know, just sort of turning to the camera. You kind of have, you're kind of limited in what you can do. And depending on your editing, if you saw the one at the plane where I was doing the one, the three-part stand-up mm -hmm. in the plane, I really didn't move. I was right. just standing at three different sections of that plane, but we edited it to make it seem like I was moving, but it was just to show you the different parts of the plane. But I was standing statically in all of them. Yeah. Now, that was a great stand-up because it was really like five stand-ups in one, but it was so quick that it really worked. There, you know, over the years, I've seen a lot of people do those kind of things. When they work, they're great. If they don't work and you do overdo it, then it, they look really tacky. So just, if you're gonna do it, try it. And then ask somebody else if it works. You know, because if it doesn't, you don't want to put it in. So, Larissa? It, it depends where you want to wind up. So let me just say this. They have, I have, for every story that's been like mine that's gone up through the small cities yep. to make it to the big city, there's someone who, like Dana Bash, who mm -hmm. was like a producer at CNN and right. then just got molded to become. But those stories seem few and farther in between. Well, it's, 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 then, it's, yes. Well, <laughs> and I did not want to be the one in a thousand. I wanted to just get the kinks out. I, 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 I don't know that it's a fair characterization, but it's, it's unusual. It's not impossible. It's more likely to happen at CNN than it is at ABC. It's more likely to happen at MSNBC and, or Fox. It's more, ha it's more likely to happen now. Fox. Oh, I'm sorry? At Fox. They yeah. do that a lot. Yeah. Like and it's, it's, it's more likely to, be ha to happen if you're working as a, as a digital person. I mean, I can, t you know, Poppy Harlow at CNN, for instance, who now anchors a show in the Sat Saturday and Sunday afternoons and does reporting the rest of the week, started off as a producer at CNN Money. And actually, she wasn't even a producer. She was an associate producer. You're not going to get an entry-level job at the networks, by the way, as an associate producer. It's it going to be like a, a production. It can be a news assistant yeah. or digital or news assistant. <laughs> yeah, or, well, not necessarily, but still, yeah. The, the point is the same. Um, but you can work your way up. But getting from there to being a correspondent is, is a long shot. If you're at one of the cables, it's a little bit less difficult. If you're working at a local station as a producer, it's possible, but... Again, you're better off going to a smaller net market and being a reporter. And because as you get more repetitions, whether you, you have a coach or, or a mentor, doing it is the best way to learn. And you get your kinks out. I mean, yeah. I couldn't do live shots like that when I was in Syracuse, my first market. So I, it's just the smaller markets that you're in, the better you get at writing, the better you get at being live, depending on the station the station I went to was fantastic. It's all about being in those smaller cities because it teaches you all the things that you're learning right now, like, like putting them into motion and you get all the bad things out of the way and your stumbles and all the 12,000 takes it takes you to do a stand-up. Then by the time you get to a big city or you get to CNN, mm -hmm. it's not that bad and your photographers aren't complaining about you at all. Or that t it's just well, so much. Photographers always complain always about complain, everybody. But so that's, you get, just get used to that. Let, I, let me get the people in the back. Yeah. No. No, you're going to get a job easily. Everyone yeah. want everyone is looking for producers. I can get you five jobs tomorrow. <laughs> Local news, yes. Yeah. But we and you can get a network job tomorrow too. Talia's looking for people left and right. It's all about who you know, a lot of times, too. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, I'm not saying get you a good job <laughs> right away. But I mean, just something that swipes your badge in, in the building. Usually, as a news, as well, they, they, start, yeah. they started in, as interns, they become news assistants, then they become PAs and APs, and then if you don't get stuck at, P, at AP, which can happen, because 
CNN particularly depends a lot on AP to do an important job. And if they're really good, sometimes they don't get promoted because they're too they're valuable. Cheap. They're cheap so, too. They, they yeah. have a cheaper title and they get the job done faster. So. Yeah, and then, then you, okay. Is there any tips on more I, I, you know, read the paper. Yeah, yeah. Read papers. Read, you know. I, being articulate is. I don't even know. That's like a speech thing. Oh, that's yeah. It's a very hard question. I don't know. If it's I mean, just pr and honestly, I went to an undergrad school where we had a college newscast at Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays. So. I got in there freshman year and I became obsessed with it and it was just constantly, constantly, constantly. And what I would do sometimes is I would look in the mirror and say it and, and practice stand-ups. That's a very good, good you know, like if, way to do it. For example, if I did a stand-up that night or for a news, I must have practiced it a million times before I did it that day with the photographer, like a million times over. But that's not, but articulate is about the language you use and I think part of it is what Ray's talking about, which is you practice it and you even record it and say, okay, how does it sound? Could I say this better? I also did radio. I don't know if you guys have a radio I station think, here. That's probably dead now, right? we, No, we have, we have radio classes. <laughs> I mean, I did radio news, which I listened to radio news. No, that's news. great. I watched radio news. Because if you listen to radio news, they have such a daunting task of storytelling without any visuals. So they have to be good at telling and speaking. And yeah. so I, did I don't want to talk about the past when we used yeah. to teach radio and television <laughs> together but for that reason. Uh, this young, this woman right here, you, yes. <laughs> okay. That's more for you. I can't remember that far back. Uh, no, really, it's just all about learning. I mean, really, they're gonna love the social media thing. I can't tell you how many times. It's it's really not an unlearn. It's more of like the skills you have to pick up now. And for me, it's been, from the moment I started in 07 to now, they're all about the tweets, they're all about the videos that I've taken on my phone, saying, hey, here I am, I just got to the scene, and this is what it looks like right now, that type of thing. The Facebook posts, they wanna see your interaction with people, not just when you're on yeah. TV, they wanna see you interacting with people like via social media. So it's more of, yeah, I don't think I've unlearned anything, but more of just added more skills to the toolbox type of thing. I think one of the things that uh, I've had to teach people to not do and this, I, I spent some time teaching people at Bloomberg TV and, um, and CNN Money, among other places. And uh, really smart people think that everything is important. And um, sometimes you have to teach people you can't tell it all. And you have to boil it down to what's important. I'll give you an example. There's a wonderful young man named Dominic Chu who... Uh, was at Bloomberg, who's now at CNBC. A really, really bright guy. And he would, they would say, you've got two minutes to talk about, you know, luxury cars and who sells them and how much they cost. And he would prepare meticulously with pictures and charts and everything else. Then he'd get on and he'd start talking, and in his ear, the producer would say, rap. rap. <laughs> and he'd go, and he then would try to say everything in 10 seconds. And the problem is, you can't understand it. So we have to teach him to have two or three important points, get those in first. If he had time for the fourth or fifth point, great. If not, make sure you have a sentence to go out on. And when they say rap, you say your sentence, you're done. Next, and you then toss to the anchor. And for your so, stand-ups, keep it simple. Like, don't try to over-explain something. Just simple and to the point. Yeah. Not too fast, just just be yourself as much as possible. I know that's harder than yeah. it sounds. It, but be yourself as a, per, I mean, the, the holy grail here is to sound like. You know what you're talking about. You are, know what you're talking about, but you're the friend next door who knows what you're talking about. There, you're you're the, the, the brother, the sister, the parent, the uncle, the, the one who sits at the table and talks and is a little bit entertaining and everybody listens to, because they're compelling and they have something to say. So, uh, hopefully that helps. <laughs> okay. Um, 
I say yes for me. It's worked I, out for I, me. I think there, there's a really good argument to be made for that. But I've also seen so many people start in other ways. Um, and I think that it just depends on who you are and what you're interested in. I mean, I've tried to make people into correspondents who shouldn't be correspondents. And like Jeff Tubin, for instance, who's on CNN, who's the legal, senior legal analyst, tried to make him a correspondent for ABC News. It was a dismal failure, probably the best thing that ever happened to him, because now he's like a superstar. He's a brand all to himself, and he has his niche, and he's doing fantastically well. And every time I see him, there's a big smile on his face, because we, we laugh about the attempt at making him into a correspondent. Um, so I think there are really a variety of ways. I mentioned Sarah Gannam. She came from a small town newspaper. It, you know, but, but you have to be, you have to know who you are and where you want to wind up. If you want to be a medical correspondent, well, you're probably better off starting off someplace where they, they do medical videos, maybe. Or you, because local news is not going to have somebody dedicated to medical stories or scientific stories. If you want to be a general assignment reporter, Yes. then I think it's the best place to go, absolutely. So I don't know if that answers your question, but, but the, the thing about it is the world of television news and journalism and video journalism, it's being disrupted completely. It's chaotic. But out of chaos, there is so much opportunity. You just have to look for it, figure out where to go and what you need to do. And getting the basic skills, learning how to shoot and edit and, and talk and write and all those things. If you know how to do all those things, you'll find a place for yourself. No question about it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like I think maybe two weeks ago. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so I was a reporter in my first station ever in Syracuse. and. Uh, because everyone wants you to walk and talk and blah, 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 blah. It was a morning show. They had me inside some like fun museum for kids and I just could not spit out what I was trying to say because I was trying to walk, I was trying to talk, I was trying to show and tell and smile and be a personable person. And I just, I, could, I literally was just like laughing, like trying to interview someone and I just was laughing and it was one of the most embarrassing because I was trying too much. I was trying to be everything yeah. to everyone and I was like all these thoughts and I couldn't spit it out. And, so it, um, because it was a smaller city, it was kind of like, I mean, it was, everyone laughed about it, and it was fine, but it was, to me, I mean, I thought about it, like, for that whole week, and tried myself to sleep every night about it, but, I mean, it, it was, you know, I had to get that under my belt to say I did it, and, you know, and I survived. I tried to be a reporter for about three weeks <laughs> at one point before I realized it's not for me, and I, I was in San Diego, and I was covering this huge fire that wiped out a whole neighborhood, like 50 homes. And I kept, you know, I did okay on, you know, reporting it and everything. And then it was time to toss back to the anchor. And I, I said, back to you, Bob. Yeah, fortunately, his name was Dave. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, everybody happens. does that. It happens, it happens totally to everybody. Happens. So it's nothing to worry about. It's just, you know. Chuck Scarborough, our main anchor, mm -hmm. messed up my name the first time he tossed me week two. And I just, like in my head, I was like, oh my God, Chuck Scarborough just messed up my name. So when they tossed to me, I was like, that's right. Blah. Like the first like sentence that I said, like the first hat three words made no sense. It was like, blah. And I like, I mean, I didn't say blah, but I started my sentence again because I was like, Chuck Scarborough just messed up my name. <laughs> like he's a legend. So that was like week two here. So yeah, it happened. All right. Well, wait, no, no. Julie had a question. Tell me, tell me which ones. I'm curious. Right. <laughs> Your News Now, Time Warner. Very good. Yeah. Okay, so the guys coming from Albany, they're related to Time Warner, New York One. They have stations all over upstate New York. Syracuse, Russia, Buffalo, Albany, Buffalo. Watertown, all those. Who knows what Tegna is? Excellent. How about Fontaine? I don't know who that 
I don't. Is that a new one? I would say under 80. I would say from 80 higher market than 80. or higher than 80. Hearst is, if you can get into Hearst, Hearst get Hearst. into Hearst. Oh, get, uh, I worked in Dallas, WFAA. I know what WFAA was, was and what it's become. It's still great, but we're, 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 we're just not as great. Just not as great. Hearst is fantastic. News 12 is great too. A lot of people, Natalie Morales came from News 12. A bunch of people have come up from News 12, so that's a great. I helped start it. Of course you did. I did, actually. <laughs> no, I'm sick. Huh? Know about the company, make a connection with that news director, make a connection, find something in common so that you stand out in their mind so that when you send them their stuff, they're like, oh yeah, that's the so-and-so who had this great story that we connected on. Something, just stand out to them some way, shape or form. We've got inside scoops on them, all their files are there, the website links are there, we try to make it as easy as possible for you to have absolutely no time, they're all overwhelmed, and... Uh, and it's only gonna get more overwhelming once you get into TV. Only. It's just, I can't tell you my email right now. It's just packed with stuff I don't even care about. But there it is. I have to read it. So, just, it's, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you. You're dismissed. So, you're to, so to your discredit, HM. <laughs>